beautiful people. And welcome to another episode of the Single Black Female Podcast. So first things first, we got to get out of the way. I just want to thank you guys for rocking with me for this long. Um, I've been on a well-needed hiatus. I am about to be 35 weeks pregnant tomorrow. So I take breaks when I need breaks unapologetically. It just is what it is at this point. So, um, but um, I'm trying my best to be consistent. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm still working in the background, still getting things prepared. Um, I just may not upload content every week. Um, so if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube YouTube channel. Um, on any platform that you are listening to us on, please leave a review because it helps other Coles people find our podcast just like you did. Okay. So sis, are you okay? Um, I haven't really checked in with you guys lately. Um, I'll be doing that this week, but I just wanted to see where you guys were at. If you guys were struggling, if you guys needed anything, um, like I always say, the DMs are always open. So feel free to reach out at any time. Not for no crazy mess because you will get blocked. I tr- it's a it's a business page, so I try not to block people. Um, but yeah, if you're on some crazy stuff, you will get blocked. Anywho, moving on to spill the tea. All right, so the title is I Messed Up Real Big Some Years Ago. I have a close friend based outside of the country along the line. I got real close to his wife, and we got talking and became extremely close. Red flag number one. On a visit to Nigeria... I and his wife had sex, which later found out till I can't seem to forgive myself. He blocked all connecting means from me reaching him, and I'm just worried, angry at myself, and really don't know the state of damage. I must I must behave, cost. Look, this is what he said. I'm just reading it. I regret my actions, real to my bone. Can't seem to forgive myself every day. I think about it. God help me. Um, not to be funny, but like, like, I mean, God can't really help the situation because you already made the decision to have sex with his wife. Um, yeah, um, you know, you can ask God for forgiveness, but what's done is kind of done. And I'm with a friend. I would have blocked you. I would have done more than blocked you, but yeah, I'm definitely with a friend on that one. Um, him and... His wife and you were totally in the wrong, um, and there's just some things you can't come back from. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a confession or want to get something off your chest, please submit your confession to Spill the Tea at singleblackfemalepodcast.com. Your secret will be revealed on the following week's show. Best friend talk. So, this week, I put together a roundtable of some wonderful women to help me kind of navigate the questions that I have about dating today. Um, I'm in no way, shape, or form obsessed with dating, but I think, honestly, the decline of realness, accountability, and loyalty will always be interesting to me. Instead of always giving you my two cents, um, I wanted to reach out to other women and kind of pick their brains instead of you guys constantly hearing from me. So um, I definitely hope you guys enjoy this episode, and please understand this was done via zoom so the quality may be totally different uh stuff may be lagging or you know fading in and out but bear with us because these women have a lot of great information and um great viewpoints so i hope you enjoy all right so i just want to take the time to thank each and every one of you guys for joining today um for this round table talk and i hope we can do this again in the future um, but the fact that you all took the time to speak with me and give up, you know, a little bit of your Saturday definitely means a lot to me. So, um, before we start, can you guys go around and introduce yourself, uh, let everybody know where you guys are living. Cause I know we have people on the West coast, we have people on the East coast and what you guys do for a living. Anybody can start. Okay. I'll start. Um, my name is Genesis Sanchez Ladson. Um, I live in Orlando, Florida, the vacation state. And um, right now, what I do is I have my own um, Instagram slash live podcast um, at Let's Talk with Hennessy um, about mental health. I am a full-time student at UCF for psychology. 
as well. Um, I should be graduating next fall, hopefully, um, and going into grad school to finish my master's and eventually get my license so I can be a mental health licensed counselor. And I also run a side business for ATV, UTV, um, four wheeling um, as well here in Orlando with my husband. I have two kids, one is three and the other one, he's one years old. My oldest, he is autistic. So I'm also a um, advocate for moms with kids with disabilities as well. That's a little bit about me. Okay, okay. Next. Um, my name is Rachel. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, I've lived here for almost a year. Um, I'm a production supervisor. I work for Hormel Foods. Um, I just got promoted uh, to an engineer position, um, hey. plan and scheduler um, uh, slash maintenance supervisor. And I think it's pretty cool because I don't have a degree. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, and I was in the Marine Corps for 11 years. Um, and I'm not in anymore. That's about it. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. You. Okay. <laughs> okay. My name is uh, Maricela. We live on the West Coast in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Um, I am a customer logistics supervisor for transportation. So I work in the truck driving industry with the diesels and basically just manage them. Um, I do logistics as well, but I am more of a warehouse side and she's more like sending me the drivers and I'm the one who like checks them into the warehouse and stuff. Got it. Okay. So you guys work for the same company? No, 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 not yet. Same oh. industry, different companies, yeah. <laughs> Got it, okay. All right, sorry, I'm going last. Um, I know it says Javonna Johnson, but I don't go by that name. My name is Danae. Um, I am a special education teacher. This is my second year. Um, I was in the military, I was in the Air Force for five years, and then I got medical uh, medical discharge. I am currently in my master's program right now for autism. And then, yeah, hopefully in the next year or two, I can open up a, um, a gym for children with different abilities. Wow, that's ambitious. All right, ladies. So I'm gonna get into the questions. Feel free to chime in. Please don't be afraid. Uh, don't be nervous, just, you know, if it resonates with you, go ahead and, you know, just speak on it, okay? So in your own words, um, what's a healthy relationship to you? Um, I'll go. Um, to me, a healthy relationship is, it varies. So I want to say first that it varies by person because what mm -hmm. I consider a healthy relationship might not relate to the next person what they think is a healthy relationship. And um, to me, my marriage is a healthy relationship. I've had very different types of relationship, both with men and women, and they all vary differently in different aspects, but they weren't healthy in my own um, way. When I say healthy relationship, I see communication is a big one. So we're not arguing or talking um, above each other or competing on who's right and who's wrong because that's not what the situation in itself is. It should be, um, it should be communicating about what the, what the problem may be and mm -hmm. finding a solution together. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to go one way. It can go halfway just to get into that medium. Um, mm -hmm. Another way of seeing a healthy relationship is um, definitely love language, like understanding each other's love language. Because for example, with me and my husband, my love language is not his at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my love language, I like my space. I like, um, you know, 
being told certain things at certain times. I like uh, flowers being brought at certain times. With my husband, it's complete opposite. He's a very physical person. So if I'm not constantly hugging him or kissing him, he may feel like something's off, even though that's not my love language. So understanding each other's love language is definitely another one because just because a lot of people think that for you to be a soulmate, you guys have to be exactly alike. And that's not, that's not the case, at least for me. Anybody else want to chime in on that? I was going to say, I honestly am learning what a healthy relationship is. I've never had one. They've all been kind of traumatic. Um, mm -hmm. So I, um, I know communication is like one, you know, um, that's absolutely a good thing. And then Genesis, as you were saying, like love language, I'm the same. Don't touch me. Like, I'm good. I need my space. Like, I love you, but please do not touch me. Like, because of things that have happened. And that's also another uh, part in who you are. And then when you start dating someone, like all my exes are physical. It wasn't for me. Like, I, I can show you, I love you without touching you. And for them, mm -hmm. it's always like, oh my gosh, you know, you must be touching someone else. Like, how, how, like, you know? So I am still learning what healthy looks like. Um, I'm relearning what love looks like. So, yeah. I feel it. Um, I feel the same with communication, um, but also, behind that is being able to like understand where they're coming from not just listening to them yeah and being able to be like okay i understand and also saying like i'm willing to work on this that you that i feel like i need to work on instead of saying that's just how i am mm -hmm. and also understanding like their traumas and like their either relationship traumas or like childhood trauma to be able to understand why they are the way that they are. Yeah. I feel like the first year of our relationship, we've been together for three years, but the first year was definitely like learning like how each other like communicate, especially when we're upset, um, giving that person like time. Because I'm like, let's fix it right away. And she's like, no, I need time to like take it all in, figure it out, then discuss it after. Mm -hmm. um, and then just like, you guys were saying about love languages ours are completely different like I have physical touch she's words of affirmation and like if I don't get a kiss in the morning I'm like oh my god he doesn't love me <laughs> <laughs> so like definitely like just learning that other person I feel like we're definitely not the same we're like kind of like opposites for sure so just like understanding each other's personalities and knowing like for me at least like she's not the most um outgoing person and like i had to understand that but like not everybody is like ready to like just you know take off and go party like yeah. <laughs> right away you know what i mean <laughs> yeah kind of like meeting meeting each other where the where you guys are at so like um instead of me expecting my partner to be like me or mm -hmm. respond like you know i do um in certain situations it's like I feel like a part of a healthy relationship is meeting that person where they're at. If that's not what they do and that's not how they are, then that's just kind of what it is, you know, and either I can choose to stay or I can work with it. But yeah, definitely meeting somebody in, min in the middle, I think is important as well. Um, so I know some of you guys are, are in a relationship and I know some of you guys are maybe in the street or on the sidewalk. Um, <laughs> But what do you guys think about dating these days? It's only to the single folks. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay. Right now, I'm not dating. Um, mm -hmm. I had an incident back in September, so I'm kind of like on my healing journey. But like, I date both men and women. And mm -hmm. it's like scary out there. I don't know. Um, I'm 33. I'm about to be 34. And I never know if I could date 
like, what's my age range? Cause I feel weird. Like a 27 year old was trying to talk to me. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm a grandma compared to him. So I don't know. Um, and then you have like women on the other side who are like, yeah, let's move in together. Let's do this. And I'm, like, I'm not ready for that yet. Like I just want to know your name. You want to get ice cream? Like what? Is like, um, so it's, it's tough. And then also with the new generation, I guess, um, everybody just want to have sex first. Like, I'm not ready for that yet. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not for the streets. I'm not for the sidewalk either. I'm in the house. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I got out of a relationship like a couple of months ago. So, you know, I've just been out here. Like I've been out there. Um, like, <laughs> I, like basically like I am for the streets. I feel like, and it's like just going to be me forever. And like, that's it. I love it. I love it here. I'm staying here. I'm for it. There's also a man that comes over like every other night and we dance in my living room and I'm like, oh, I kind of like him. But then when I wake up the next day, I'm like, hey, there's a man in my bed and like, I don't want a man in my bed. I just rather have like my cat in my bed all night with me. You know, <laughs> if you could just come and then leave. Um, you know, so me personally, the dating, yeah. Like I'll, I mean, I'll hang out for a little bit, but like, I'm gonna just, I'm out there. Like, I don't wanna be in a relationship with nobody ever. I just like it, freedom. At least. At least you know, though, because there's some people who know that, but they'll still pursue somebody as if they're trying to be in a relationship with them. Oh, absolutely. Because you know that saying? happened to me before, like, you know, where somebody was for the streets and then they're like trying to, they're they, they playing like they, they giving me all the vibes, like they, we trying to go together. And then, so I get that, but now nah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very honest about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm definitely not in the streets nor am I in the sidewalk um but just from like things that I see so like I'm in like a lot of women's group or groups or whatever and all they talk about is dating because dating is life I guess and um <laughs> it's just it's it's appalling bro like just some of the things that like I screenshot from like people's like profiles and they're like I'm looking for this this and this you can't be over 150 pounds like the audacity, like you look like this, like, and it's not all about looks, but it's like, some people say you got to date within your, within your, what's the word? Like, what's, you're on, you're, you're on, yeah. mute, Danae. Oh, I'm sorry. Your range, your facial breath. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, how can you look like, you know, Raggedy Ann and, and ask or expect a supermodel or how can you say I only what I only want white women but then when you know you dm a black woman you're or a black woman you're like oh I'll make the exception for you like what like I don't know and then I just feel like a lot of people lack accountability um and this is like going into my my next topic which is toxicity and I remember like back in the day like I mean, okay, granted, I was, I grew up in the 90s, so we had internet, but we weren't really, like, on the internet like that, you know, yeah. because of dial-up and whatnot, but, like, <laughs> I feel like toxicity is glorified these days, um, and I don't know if you guys agree, but it's, like, why, why do people idolize future? <laughs> I've been trying to find, figure out that whole situation for the longest because to wow. me toxicity is not something you should be proud of babe like <laughs> at all 100% like toxicity is so bad I've been in so many toxic relationships before I met my husband and mm -hmm. like I look back now and I'm like why the hell did I put up with this shit why did I even, why did I even stay in that shit? Why did I allow somebody to make me feel that low of a human? Like to make me do some crazy shit, like crazy shit. Like I'll pull up to your house without you mm. even knowing and open your door. Like that type <laughs> of crazy shit. I was low and it's, it's, it's sick. Like the fact that you have to be in that position because someone has ruled your mind that way is really scary it's scary yeah. to be honest like 
So I don't understand why society thinks that toxicity is such a hype because I don't, um, especially because a lot of toxic relationships do not end well. Like physically, the other person can be mentally destroyed. There's so much that comes with that. And Mm -hmm. I feel like it's one of the reasons it has to do with music and social media because it's just so easy to be this person behind a screen you know to say these like be all hype about toxicity behind the screen but in person it's a different story it goes back to like how you're saying we were raised in the 90s we had internet but it wasn't like this like how it is it wasn't our life yeah it was not you still went outside for hours and hours like I remember those days so so I don't know it's it's weird to me but to each their own. Some people enjoy it. They really, and that has to do with trauma. Like that to me tells me you need to heal, but we can't control everybody. So. Yeah. Um, Like I'm so, I think I'm so like triggered by future. Like I don't even listen to his music. Like when I see him, I'm just like, oh, because when I see, you know, when I see future I I just equate him to being toxic and maybe he's not maybe he goes to church every Sunday and he's a Christian you know what I'm saying like (laughs) I'll never know because that's like young Dolph young Dolph was rapping about all these bitches all these hoes and stuff like that but at the end of the day young Dolph had a family he had you know two kids he had a wife you know so maybe he's just living an internet persona but I I'm so triggered by him and like you know how he's praised for being toxic that I don't even listen to him um but when it comes to accountability, why do you think people like are okay with not being held or why do you think people are so against being held accountable? Like if you do something and you get caught, why place the blame on me? You know what I'm saying? Like why throw it back on me? Like why is that such an issue these days to be held accountable? Is it because like homies aren't holding you accountable so you think it's cool or like what? I definitely think that that has to do with it like the person that they were with prior they didn't hold them accountable so they're just like used to getting away with it like used to getting their way like um you know we both got out of very toxic relationships before we met and um I feel like she wasn't held accountable for like some of her actions before so then when we started dating and I'm like I'm not okay with this like she was like whoa like nobody's ever told me like (laughs) they're not okay with that but you know it's like a conversation you have to have like in order to like set those boundaries that you're like not okay with I feel like before I met her like the girls that I used to talk to like they would let me walk all over them like Mm -hmm. they would never let me like they would never tell me anything they would just let me do whatever and then when I met her she was just like whoa boots on the ground you need to you need to shut the fuck up (laughs) so then once she I was like oh I kind of like that you know (laughs) like I like someone that's gonna put me in my place because like you know I like to be held accountable now because if I don't it's just like you know I'm just gonna be walking around with like no sense of accountability and that's just gonna you know affect me another like in my work or anything else so yeah she's definitely like dominant I would say I want to say um that's really beautiful that you guys are able to talk about that like that and Mm -hmm. accept that that was an issue because that's something you don't see in a lot of couples they'll act and turn the face and be like okay like she's like that but I'm gonna just act like it's perfect I really yeah. like how you guys are able to be that open. That's that's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely call each other out like constantly. So it's like it we we've learned like not to feel attacked because before, at least me, like I used to feel attacked when she'd call me out because I'm like, just like her, like I wasn't being held accountable either for like my toxic traits, you know. So um definitely like it's taken you know like taking some work taking some work and like a lot of (laughs) communication and just like how we said in the beginning like actually listening to that and like remembering it like when you're in that situation again because like you can talk about it say I'm not going to do this again and then like it still happens right yeah do you think um social media and 
um, having easy access to other people has affected healthy relationships? I feel like there, they, everybody thinks like there's a sea full of people out there. So like, there's more, like, if you're not going to be the one, then like, there's more options out there. So like, they don't take the time to like invest into one person that they have a genuine connection with. Yeah. We're definitely the microwave um, generation right now. We want it now. We want it fast. Oh, you're not warming up to what I need. Oh, let me switch and get to my mm -hmm. deal. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I think social media has done good in the sense that you do have access to so many other people that you maybe if it weren't here, you didn't, you know, like back in the day you dated like the neighborhood friend or whatever. And now like you can go on a date site and there's just thousands of people that you can talk to. Right. So it's it helps in that sense. You can definitely find your person easier, but I do think it does um, affect negatively with the fact that people aren't able to just, like they said, establish a connection with people and work with them to make that connection work. They just want to move on. Oh, you're not for me. Okay, period. Like, I'll move on. Like, you know, so. Yeah. Does anybody know what the 80-20 rule is? No. Okay, so the 80-20 rule is um, when you're in a relationship with your partner, they're going to give you 80% of your needs, and they're probably going to lack that 20%. Um, and I feel like with men today, they have this 80 wrapped up in this nice little package, you know, in a relationship, but they, nobody's willing to do the work, so they go out and seek that 20% that they're lacking. Um, why do you guys think, uh, I think, either Genesis or Madi, one of you guys said like, uh, nobody's interested in putting in the work. Why do you guys think nobody's interested in putting in work anymore? Because me personally, I would rather put in work with somebody that I give a fuck about than to just be out there humping somebody just to say that I'm humping somebody. You know what I'm saying? So why do you guys think like nobody wants to put in work anymore? I'm gonna um, give, oh, go ahead girl. But no, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> I'm going to give a more uh, psychological answer to that. So mainly with a uh, few research that I've done in school, the main reason is trauma. So a lot of people and their ego, a lot of people aren't willing to let their ego go. And mm -hmm. ego is, a, is not a bad thing. A lot of people think that ego is can usually has a bad connotation but not necessarily it has a good one because ego makes you you it makes you that confidence all that good feeling that you have right but in that sense ego is really hard when you're trying to become vulnerable um so I think people just aren't willing to work because work is not easy, putting in work in a relationship, putting a work in therapy, putting a work to build a business, none of that is easy. So it's just easier for someone to detach themselves. And it's so easy for us to detach ourselves now with social media, because you can send a text and break up with somebody, you know, back then, like you bro, I remember when I was in school, I had to break up with people in person. <laughs> so and that was embarrassing it made me feel like crap so now you just send a text or you send a dm or you just block them like you know so yeah. it's it's easier to desensitize yourself now and not have to do all that work not have to put up with whatever is the small situation because believe it or not a lot of relationships do break up for small things that can be solved like they're really not that complicated um, unless it's, of course, you know, more complicated like marriage where it's like financial stuff and situations like that. And even with that, like financial things can always be solved, always. So I don't know. I, I, to me, that, that it has to, a lot to do with trauma and ego. And that, mm -hmm. that has to be something that that person has to be willingly to like see in themselves first, because if you don't see the problem within yourself, you're not going to be able to help your relationship or anybody else. I feel like 
people put in the work when they want to put in the work. So if you're like with them and you see that they're not putting in the work, like, like, you know, there's someone out there that's willing to put in the work. So it's like, just in my opinion, I also feel like social media like influences a lot of people like to think what a relationship should look like and they let that affect like how their relationship works because like they read online like oh it should be going this way but why is my relationship going this way so I feel like uh, social media has a lot of influence on them and how it should be when you know it should be going however you think a healthy relationship is like this is what a healthy relationship is to me. So this is what I'm uh, by by, but yeah. Got it. So on to the side chick conversation. Mm -hmm. Why are so many women okay with being a side chick? Do you like, why do you think so many women or men too? Cause men, they can be side in words too. Why do you think people are, are so upset accepting of a man having a significant other and then knowingly, you know, still being macaroni and cheese or baked beans, a side dish, you know? <laughs> I feel like I have a lot of friends that are like the side chicks or like I've had a lot of friends that are the side chicks. And like from just seeing those girls that I was friends with, they have a lot of co in common with, they've never been in like one healthy relationship where they have like, yeah that standard of like how a relationship should be and you know they let the guy like manipulate them into thinking like but I really love you like you're really the one I fuck with even though I'm in a public relationship with this other person mm -hmm. and then they also like convince themselves that like you know it's the girl's fault because she's not doing what she should be doing in the relationship but really like they're just allowing that man to like think that it's okay to like have this side chick on the side and be in a relationship because she's okay with it mm -hmm. I think it also has a lot to do with the pick me culture like you mm -hmm. just want somebody to pick you you don't even care like it could be 10 percent of a man and it's like I'll take it like mm -hmm. girl like it but it all has to do with trauma like you were saying mm -hmm. yeah if you've never felt love you know then it goes into like childhood issues then you'll take anything like you take me on a burger date and she's getting you know Ruth Chris like <laughs> set your standards up but I feel like people are so comfortable with just getting five percent of a person because they're scared to really go out there and find somebody for them like you're okay with getting a piece of a person maybe you know mommy daddy issues that probably plays a part in it but mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely the pick me culture just pick me like I'll do anything for you to give me 5%. So basically everybody needs to do a whole lot of healing, mm -hmm. period. I feel like that's what it is. And I feel like nobody, like, I mean, there's some people who are out here, you know, in therapy, you know, doing the work and stuff like that. But I just feel like in this, in this, in this climate today, like people are just, nobody wants to do the work. They want the end result. You know what I'm saying? They want to be okay. So of course that's the persona that they're going to put up on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, but nobody's out here really trying to do the work because if I'm not right within myself, if I don't love myself, how can I be with somebody else? You know, I can't be half a person and expect somebody else to make me whole. I got to be whole before I can be with anybody else. So. Or if we were like truthful, like Rachel we would all be in a better space in life, you know? Right, 100%. Yeah, that's what I'm You know? I love women like Rachel and men like Rachel who accept that, like, they can sit there and be like, yeah, I love the streets and I have no care for it. Like, it's fine. That to me is healthy. Yes. Super oh, healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that you sit here and know who you are and what you want, 100% healthy. Like, the you sitting here and just wanting to be with someone for the the heck of it for the heck of not being alone and don't get me wrong I've been there so I can talk about it because I've been there I've I've accepted men to just stick around just because I didn't want to be alone I was afraid of being alone but 
it's scary, but you have to you have to face the music at some point. Like you're not gonna move forward with life if you don't face who you really are and what you really want in life. I was in a like my last relationship that I had, I feel like the only reason that I, you know, got into it was because I was like, oh, I need to be in a relationship, you know? And I, I was like, oh, I, I got out of the military. Now, like, I'm going to date a civilian and I'm going to be in a real relationship because all the <laughs> relationships in the Marine Corps, like, I, like, speaking of a side chick, I didn't, like, I, I, tr like, and when I tell you this, like, I truly enjoyed it because a, <laughs> I don't like hanging out with, with dudes for too long. I don't like hanging out with people for too long. Like they gotta go. So it's like, mm. oh, so if I just got this portion of the person, oh, just from you know, 5 p.m. to 6.30, sweet. Send you back to where you go. I only gotta talk to you every once in a while. And I really, I don't have to feed you. No, I don't, <laughs> that's, you know? And that, that's the way that I used to, that's, that's the way that I, you know, used to think of it. And like, I was younger and yeah, like, you know, you could say like, I wasn't a shit, like whatever, you know, it, it is what it is. That's who I am. And I'm, and I take accountability for everything that I've done in my past. That's one thing that I will do. I'm, I'm, um, I take full responsibility for any, everything that I have messed up, but, um, my last relationship, I feel like I just got into it because I was like, Oh, I met this dude. We're having, like, he was wild too. Like we just partied all the time. And I was like, yeah, this is great. I'm going to marry this man. Like you can even ask Zanae. I'd be like, yo, I'm going to, I'm going to marry Tyler. Come to my wedding. Get what? Why? Why? That's not for me. That's crazy. Could you imagine me at the altar? Absolutely not. One man for the rest of my life. Like, like one penis for the rest of my life. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's just me, baby. Like, I don't, that's it. I feel it. I feel it. So um, what are some red flags to you guys when you initially start dating somebody? And I know like in the moment, red flags don't always look like red flags. They just look like, uh, they look like a yellow flag. Like this is something <laughs> to get over. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's weird, but I'm just getting to know him. Maybe this is, you know, something we can move past. But what's something that's a red flag to you when you initially start talking to somebody? Hey, mama. Say it again. Their mom, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm like serious with moms. Um, my ex husband's mom used to always say I was a Jezebel, and like she called me every name under the sun. Didn't even know me from a can of paint. And Not a Jezebel. <laughs> like, I'm thinking, like, girl, I had sex with two people my whole entire life. You don't even. Okay, cool. Oh my but, god. Yeah, just everything she said, it was such an issue. She controlled everything in our relationship that, and I'm just like, okay, well, when we get married, it'd be different. It wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't. And it literally like still to this day, she hopefully is not listening to this, um, irks my entire soul. <laughs> mm. Like just everything. She wants to control things. She's like, you should be married if you have a, a man in your house you shouldn't um you shouldn't have your tubes tied like what okay yeah so the mom yeah. i'm gonna piggyback off that i'm gonna say um meeting their family is a little bit scary because um i feel like some at least for me some people use that as like a control leverage to mm -hmm. kind of make you feel like oh, I'm meeting his family or I'm meeting her family. This is good. Like, he's taking me serious. But you might not know what his family knows. Like, you know, you could be the other chick that they just brought a month ago. So mm -hmm. I think something with this relationship with my marriage taught me is that he actually took his time to introduce me to his family. We actually got married and didn't tell our parents at all. So... Mm -hmm. We did it because we wanted to, not because we needed our parents' decisions to get married. So um, when I did get to meet his parents, though, they were very, very accepting, very sweet, and very, very kind. And I felt like I, I appreciated it more than how it was with all other relationships I had had, where they brought me to their family's house 
And I was kind of like, okay, who are these people? Like, I I don't know anything about these people. And he's just bringing me here just to show like me as a trophy kind of thing. That's how it kind of felt for me. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm, I would say that that would be a, a red flag. Honestly, like, I don't even feel like, it, I guess it's a case by case, but I don't even feel like meeting the family is what it used to be anymore. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like the whole family be in on it. Like they be like, <laughs> oh. Because they owe the loyalty to the family. family. <laughs> so it's like, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. I have to Absolutely, absolutely. Mama knows who you brought in the crib last week. Mm-hmm. And this week you got me in the crib. So it's, I don't even feel like it's an honor anymore. And I think when I was younger, it was a big deal to meet the family because it's like, you know, I want to be accepted into this family because this is who I want to be with. And blah, blah, blah. you know what right. I'm saying? But I'm more realistic at the end of the day. Like if I'm going to be with somebody, whether I have your family's approval or not, we won't be together. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I meeting the family don't mean shit no more honestly it really doesn't but it's a case-by-case situation because there's some situations where it really is a privilege and an honor to meet that person's family Mm -hmm. so what was the breaking point of your last relationship when did you know it's when did the blinders come off and you're like look I gotta get the out of here She got us up here talking about trauma, y'all. Like, I don't want to think about this. I Saturday, like, sheesh. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, it was definitely um, being in the hospital. So my my fiance before my husband, um, I was in the hospital, and I I had I completely thought there was something wrong with me. Like, I thought there was something physically wrong with me like I couldn't breathe I like passed out at work like I I was Mm. convinced there was something wrong with me and that's when I realized that how panic attack and anxiety can like really affect you and at that point um I was I remember I was in the hospital I was only 17 years old and this dude came in an Uber, y'all. He came in an Uber because he didn't even have a car because he couldn't afford a car. And he's 23 years old at that time. And um, he pulled up and I was like, do I really want to live my life like this? Like, do I really want to be that female that just is in and out hospitals because she's going crazy over a man that really ain't nothing, like really is not providing anything for me at all whatsoever Mm. not even paying my phone bill nothing he's not doing anything so Mm. when I was there I like had to talk to myself and I was like there has to be something better than this like I cannot be this ugly of a person for me not to find somebody better than this right so that was that was it for me that hospital was it for me yeah anybody else um, for me, I feel like um, like the end of the relationship, like all of the respect goes out the door. Like you no longer respect each other. Like you're just yelling at each other, calling each other names. And it's like something like for me, at least it's like something I can't forget. Like once you say what you say, like I'm always going to think about that shit so that I'm never going to feel like comfortable in the relationship again, where like I'm like infatuated and like in love with you like all of that has just like left the building once like the respect is gone yeah uh for me it was it was a lot (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I was with someone for like seven years almost eight before I got with her and like half of the relationship she was still in the closet like she didn't want to come out so Mm. that was like a big like it took a big toll on me because like it would bother me that she would introduce me as her friend all the time but it took me a lot to come out too so I was trying to be understanding like okay like you're not ready to come out I wasn't ready to come out until I was out of high school so I try to be understanding but then like it in came in like the text messages from like other people and like her coming home like seven in the morning after being out all night and all of that so 
once that started going on I was just like dude like it's it's too much like I can't I can't deal and even after I left her it was so hard for her to leave me alone like I dated someone um, before Mari and she like we were in the car together and she tried to like manip she tried she took my phone and she was like you need to text that girl that you're dating <laughs> and tell her that you want to be with me that you don't want to be with her and she took me like on the big like kind of kidnapping situation she did not want to let me out of the car she would not stop the car <laughs> and that was we were just in the middle of nowhere with like cornfields and shit and I was just like this is it she's gonna kill me like what well, it was terrible so even when I left her like my mom was like she liked her so much because I never told her anything that she did I was I keep it to myself like I don't tell anyone about my relationships so then my mom would be like no you're supposed to be with her blah 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 and when it came to meeting Mari she didn't even want to meet her she was the like family was not it for me you guys I was like nah that was my red flag and I was like nah I'm leaving like they didn't like me they were obsessed with the ex-girlfriend like the, there was even a time we're dating and like we're going over to her house and the fucking ex-girlfriend is in front of the house picking up the nieces like to go to the oh movies my God. and I'm like what the fuck because you don't want to be the bitch like okay your ex-girlfriend can't kick it with your nieces even though they built like this seven-year relationship with them you know like but still like there should be some type of boundaries like why don't you guys go drop them off to her house or like you know why are they still coming to her house it was just a mess yeah, my mom was like, she didn't want me to let her go. She was just like, you need to work on it. You're moving too fast. And I was like, but I already met this person. Like, I want you to meet her. And she was like, well, I don't move as fast as you. And I was just like, her mom's been at the same man yeah. her whole life. Yeah, she's been with my dad. <laughs> she was 21. Yeah, so she really just wanted me to just stay with that one person. It was just, yeah. just it was... I was so over my mom for a while. The ex-girlfriend stole her dog. Oh, yeah. She stole oh my, my dog. <laughs> and my That's family helped her steal the dog. dog. Yeah. So, yeah. It was, she's a bad influence. But now they That's love her. Lot. So, yeah. It was whatever. I mean, I still Thank think God. about that. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, when I was in therapy, my, uh, my therapist brought it up to me and she was like did you know that being cheated on is a traumatic event mm -hmm. and I'm just like how you know what I'm saying like how is that trauma it's it's just stuff that happened you know but after talking to her I realized okay she is right it's a traumatic event so do you think people think about that before they cheat how no. traumatic it is to the other person no oh no. and how it, like Cause that, like that one event, may it be one time or you know multiple times, that shapes who you are as a person for the rest of your life. So my question is, why do you think people, instead of walking away from a relationship and just being like, I'm good, you know, instead of being a a, a grown ass man or a grown ass woman, why do you think they choose to cheat instead of just you know doing what they need to do and just be open and honest with people? I feel like for me, I it was hard for me to leave someone that cheated on me because it takes me like so long to get comfortable with someone, like super long. Like even with Maddie now, like I'm still not comfortable doing a bunch of things. <laughs> and she's just like, when are you going to do this? And I'm just like, dude, it's going to take me time. <laughs> and like with her, I was just like super comfortable already. And I was just like, man, like, I have to start all over with someone that I don't know. And it's just, I felt like that was the main thing, but I feel like sometimes there's a saying in Spanish that says like, sometimes being comfortable with someone is stronger than love. So I think I definitely was just more, the comfortability of being with her was stronger than the love that I had for her. And I just stayed because it was just easier. It's the easier thing to do than to like leave and have to, like start all over with someone which is really toxic but you know yeah. it shapes you into who you are eventually it makes you understand better in the long run so 
Yeah. Um, I will come at it from a different point of view. So as the cheater, because I was a cheater in past relationships. And um, when I cheated, like, I didn't think of the other person before I did it. Like, I just did it because I just made that decision. And then after, mm -hmm. like, the guilt comes in of, like, okay, I'm not meant to be with this person because if I was meant to be with them, I would have never, like, disrespected them in this way by cheating on them. So then, like, that was my ticket out, like, yeah. So, like, I probably should should have broke up with them first before I cheated, but, like, then I cheated, and then I just broke up with them, like, right away. Because I was like, that's how I know, like, I'm not meant to be with them. Definitely wouldn't do that in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I feel like also before cheating, I already felt like I was not invested anymore in the relationship. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's a safety thing. So like, mm -hmm. um, you know, having that person in the back burner while you're kind of feeling some feelings for someone new, it's like, okay, I have options here. Like if this doesn't work out, I still can mm -hmm. go back to my main one and I'm good. So it's like, a, it has to do with safety. Um, uh, for me, that's how I see it. It has to do with safety for the cheater, at least. For the person mm -hmm. that's being cheated on, like, um, you know, like they said, it's, it's hard to like have to start all over and want to want to start all over with somebody. I've been on both ends. So it, it's cheating is just a very, very horrible topic. Um, and it is 100% trauma, like cheating can change a person's whole point of view into a next relationship where mm -hmm. and some people don't even grow from it. They just can't trust people anymore and they can't trust anyone anymore. So um, definitely like if, if someone doesn't, if you're not feeling it with somebody or you feel some type of feelings towards somebody else, which I'm going to clarify, you can love people. You can love different individuals in different way. But when you're in love with someone, you're not, you're going to go out your way to not hurt that person at all. Even yeah. if you do feel some type of love for somebody else. Um, so if, if you feel like this other person is just this feeling, you're feeling, you're feeling that's extremely strong, excuse me, then like um, Mari said, you should not be with that other person whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Just end it. Like just mm -hmm. end it or just take a break. Even if you take a break, you're just like, let me figure this out first and see what's going on here. And then I'll come back and see like, if this is really what I thought it was like that, that's more mature, more, more growthful than you just going on and cheating on somebody um, and just dragging somebody else's feelings along and trauma along. So my last question, ladies, um, what advice do you give? We have younger listeners on this podcast. What advice would you give to them in regards to them pursuing their next relationship? Don't get into a relationship until you have a lot of money. Do not start dating <laughs> anybody until you're over the age of 30. <laughs> so going to school, finish going to school before you get into a relationship. If you're in the military, don't be in a relationship. It's not worth it. You need to do some growing yourself first before you try to bring somebody else into your life. Otherwise, it's a mess. Because that's, mm -hmm. that's also why I'm not in relationships because it would just be a hurricane. Um, so just, you know, get your money, do what you gotta do, wait till you're 30 or over and then get into a relationship. You forgot to practice safe sex while you're doing all that. If you're gonna do that, mm -hmm practice safe sex no kids until at least 37 like just don't do it <laughs> i'm gonna say to each their own um learn yourself as an individual first because only you know what you want in life genuinely so when you when you actually start to um learn yourself and learn your true desires and what you really want that's when you'll know what you want in a partner and when you want a partner and when you want kids. Um, you know, I always say I got really lucky on that, that, that little small percentage. I met my husband in the military. We met one day, 
we had love at first sight, I swear. And we got married <laughs> within a week. And we've been together for five years. And oh, wow. um, we have two beautiful kids. Um, you know, we've done everything from the ground up, literally from the ground up. We had moved into our first apartment together in the military, no furniture, no nothing, no silverware, slept on the floor for years. And people would not even know while I was pregnant, I slept on the floor. So I think to each their own, I just got really lucky because I knew what I wanted. I experienced a lot of stuff in life at a very young age, unfortunately and fortunately, but everybody is different. My sister, she's 22 um, and you know, she's like Rachel. She does not want a relationship. She enjoys being alone. She loves the streets and that's all good. Like, good. Like, you know, if you like being alone, embrace that girl embrace that boy like being alone is a beautiful thing sometimes being alone is much better than being in a relationship because you get to enjoy who you really are without having to be hindered by somebody else but definitely figure out who you are for the younger viewers figure out who you are and what you want in life because then you'll know what what else is going to happen like it'll come for you yeah I feel like um, for the younger generation, they should know their worth and know what they're bringing to the table. Know that, um, have those conversations with that person that they're pursuing and just have it early on, like know what the other person wants. So there's no surprises down the line of the relationship, knowing that they're not interested in marriage, maybe for like X amount of years and maybe that person's looking to marry like right away you know like every person's different and you definitely don't want to waste your time on the wrong person so I just feel like you just need to communicate everything that you want and if like they're not giving you what you deserve then I think that you should move on to the next person because there is a person that's going to take the time to communicate that the way that you want. I feel like definitely not um do not sacrifice any of your needs for them like for example if you got into a good college but your boyfriend is over here living in California the college is like across the country like definitely don't sacrifice like your career goals or like what your life goes for that person just because you want to stay with them I feel like and if it's meant to work out then it will work out in the end like no matter what definitely all right well thank you ladies so much for being here i hope we can do this again one day and you guys have a great rest of your saturday thank you thank bye you bye bye, bye. bye.